This is really interesting because this is actually a subject that I really enjoy. I like collecting stories and writing and doing songs about, about history uh, in general. But this one is kind of interesting because it has a bardic madness component about it. Um, the story I'm going to, I heard, uh, this actually is something that occurred, allegedly, um, in the West. Um, I first heard this story probably 20 years ago when I first started in the SCA. Um, it was given to me, it was given to us by a gentleman by the name of John James McCrimmon who has since moved out. But the thing about John that was interesting, he was in the military, so he traveled around quite a bit, especially early on. And he gave this story, and it was a very interesting story, but there were fragments to it. And even though I tried to do the story, the fragments were so great that <coughs> the story never really worked. Okay, and there were there was sufficient gaps, so I said, okay, we're just going to let this go. Then, last year, we came to Bardic. And lo and behold, a young lady from Athelmark comes up and proceeds to give the exact same story. But her story also has gaps. So it was done reasonably well, but it was also incomplete. But the interesting thing is, her gaps were filled in by what I knew, <laughs> and my gaps were filled in by what she gave. And the net result was a fairly complete story of what happened. Now this occurred years and years ago at what I thought was a Western War, but I've been informed very pointedly by several Western people that the Western War does not take place at this place, so it could have been the War of the West. Uh, I didn't know that there was a, that great of a distinction between <laughs> the Western War and the War of the West, but apparently if you live somewhere west of here, it is really, really, really important. <laughs> now, this occurred at some Western War. <laughs> and what had happened was that there was a king, go figure, and he was taking part in the war. And this was, like I said, this was very early on in the, in the SCA. And this king had, was very proud, he'd been king, this was at least the second time he had been king. He was well experienced at this. He had come out here and he did not have some bark covered Freon helm. He had a brand new period stainless steel helmet that he was wearing and he had brought with him his men at arms, his knights who had been with him for years. And they were going to stand with him in battle at this war. But they were introducing something new at this war. They were introducing combat archery. And at this time, they had developed a really cool type of an arrow. It's called a Marklin arrow. And what a Marklin arrow is, is if you could imagine a regular arrow. This isn't a golf tube. This is a real arrow where you take the tip off, and on the top, you put a wooden ball. Think of it as a flying hammer. Yeah. <laughs> wrapped in leather. Now, this was new and nobody had tested it extensively. They knew that it wouldn't go through, they, you know, they tested that the ball was as big as a, uh, as a, 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 a sword. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, there, there's no way it's going to go through the isolates of a helmet <laughs> unless you're shooting it out of, an, out of a bow. Yeah. And there's some interesting physics that occurs with objects that are flying. They tend to elongate. How much did it elongate? Enough so that when someone fired this arrow at this king, it elongated enough so that the ball now fit perfectly through the eye slots of the king's helmet. And this king, for the possibly the first time in his entire SCA career, decided to mimic a historical figure. King Harold of England, <laughs> as the arrow hits him in the forehead, knocks him out cold, and the king does this. Boom. And there he is lying on the ground with an arrow 
sticking out of his helmet. He's surrounded by his men at arms. These are men who have stood with the king for years. They have been with him in battle. They have been with him in parties. They knew exactly what to do in this situation. They panicked. <laughs> they grabbed the king, threw him onto his shield, grabbed the shield, lifted it up, ran to a nearby van, shoved the king into the van, and took off to the hospital 15 miles away. But not before. They sent the king's squire to inform the queen. You know, the squire. The new squire. The squire that the king had taken the night before. All of 18 years old. And so off he goes to find the queen. Now there is the queen. She's with her ladies in waiting. Beautifully attired in their Tudor gowns, linen and lace, taffeta everywhere. And un up runs this 18-year-old kid. Kid, your majesty, the king has been killed. Oh my god. That's nice. <laughs> Oh, no, one point down. No, you don't understand. He's dead. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. He got hit by an arrow. And he took it? <laughs> no, your majesty, that's, you don't understand. He grabbed the queen. <laughs> and at this point, she starts realizing that there's more going on here than she originally thought. <laughs> so after a little bit more effort, he fi he, she finally gets the gist of the story, and she realizes what's going on. So her and her ladies-in-waiting prepare to get ready to go on to the hospital. But there's a problem. You see, the keys for their cars are in the pockets of the four knights that were carrying the king to the hospital. Except for the Volkswagen Buck. <laughs> so now the queen and her four ladies-in-waiting, all dressed in fine Tudor garb, are now packed into a Volkswagen bus. And, or bus I'm sorry, a Volkswagen bus, and off they go to the hospital 15 miles away. All right. <laughs> now we get to the hospital. In the hospital is a doctor who has been at the hospital for one week. He has just finished his residency. He's from the, the West Coast somewhere. He was in the military. This man has been under fire. He has been shot at. He has helped wounded soldiers, and now he is going to help society in this emergency room. He's seen it all. <laughs> and in through the door explodes three knights, still in armor, helm still in place, carrying between them a king, or a man, on a shield with an arrow sticking out of a helmet. <laughs> can do this. <laughs> they put him on the ground. <laughs> Who's this? The king. <laughs> what happened? He He's been hit by an arrow. <laughs> Where? At the war. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Fix him! <laughs> I would like to point out at this point what has not been done. The armor is still in place. No blood pressure has been taken. No pulses have been found, right? On the ground is sitting a guy in armor with an arrow sticking out of his head. At about this point, a groan comes out of the helmet. <laughs> oh! As the king begins to come to, he's not dead. 
the doctor who has been under fire, who has treated men in combat, panics. <laughs> okay, okay, I can do this. I can do this. I will, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go, and yeah, and we're gonna get, we're gonna get, we're, uh, we're gonna get the helmet, and we're gonna do, we're gonna cut it off. Yeah. Okay. At this point, outside pulls up a Volkswagen Beetle, in which, packed as if it was a Navy rescue raft, four ladies in waiting and one fairly irritated queen, and they open the door. Boom! Out of this rescue raft cart ca or case explodes these four women in this mass of linen taffeta and lace and one irritated, upset, and very concerned queen. So they run into this situation with this doctor and this moaning king. Yeah, okay, I, I, I know what I'll do. I'll, we'll cut the helmet off. No! No! assesses the situation completely. Walks up to the king. Looks down on him. Reaches down. Grabs the arrow. Pulls it out. And says, quit fooling around. Get cleaned up. Get up. We've got a war to run. <laughs> When the doctor comes to, he finds an emergency room devoid of knights, devoid of shields, devoid of ladies-in-waiting, just with nurses. What happened to the king? We fixed him. Where'd he go? He went back to the war. He had a war to run. And apparently to this day, if you come in to this emergency room and go, where's the king? They'll say, we fixed him. We sent him back to get a water run. Get out. 